Matthew, aka EasyBot, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use the Octatrack as a performance mixer. So it's not a tutorial, there will be some educating along the way, but mostly I'm gonna show you how I use it and see if it's something that maybe you wanna try with your Octatrack or maybe it convinces you to go get yourself an Octatrack. I don't know. But for me, this is the best thing besides a DJ mixer that I could find for mixing two hardware devices together and being able to transition from part to part in a song and feel like I'm being competitive with a DJ that has access to something like a MacBook in Ableton. That's not something I have here, and it's not something I want either. I enjoy this process, and the Octatrack does a good enough job at it to make me feel like I'm able to bring those same elements that a DJ mixer and or Ableton would bring to a performance, and I get to do it by hand. So stick around, let's check it out. What we have on the table right now is a Digitac, a Digitone, and the Octatrack. And I have the Digitac going into inputs A and B, and the Digitone going into inputs C and D. These are your two different elements. This is your percussive side and samples. Well, it's a sampler, so that makes sense, right? But this is playing drums and vocal samples, and then maybe like one melodic element that I would use to play on top of the sidechain effect that I have going on in the Octatrack. We'll get back to that later. And then over here we have the melodic side of things, so bass line, chords, leads, and sometimes some percussive things as well. But for the most part, it's gonna be melodic stuff over here. So that's the way I've designed my effects here on my Octatrack. Let me tell you a little bit about the Octatrack, right? If you've never seen an Octatrack before, this is an eight track stereo sampler. Each one of these tracks is able to be different kinds of machines, whether it's a machine that lets audio pass through to it and gives you access to insert effects, whether it's a neighbor track, which gives you access to two more insert effects while sacrificing one of your tracks, or it's a flex track, which allows you to play back recording buffers instantaneously, a pickup machine, which is similar to that, but used for loopers. And then they have the static track, which is for playing samples off of the compact flash card that you have in your Octatrack, which can be gigantic. So you can have gigantic stems, if you want, gigantic samples that you can play on your Octatrack. So very powerful, unique sampler. And there's not anything else like it yet. It also has Q output, which, which can be assigned to do different things. And it has four mono inputs or two stereo inputs, along with a stereo output and a headphone out. So there's a lot. There's a lot it can do. It has this cute little mixer too. So one of the cool things about the Octatrack is that you can build things in it. You can build things from scratch. You can build your own effects from scratch and then assign them to scenes and then engage those effects via your crossfader. And that's what I use it for. Mostly I use it for transitioning from part to part in an arrangement because I want to be competitive. I mean, I want to be competitive in the idea of making awesome live music. I want to not just be cool, that's a cool track. I want it to be like, wow, that was a cool performance that you put on and you made me want to move and I felt the buildup and the movements from one part to another were smooth and fluid and felt good. I want that. And I think that that's what the Octatrack brings me. And I think it's more fun and more versatile than a DJ mixer, also quite a bit smaller and frankly, quite a bit cheaper than most DJ mixers. The only problem is the Octatrack is Sample rate is 44.1 and you have to use 44.1. So everything gets downsampled to 44.116, right? Not a big deal. That's considered, you know, high quality or um, high fidelity or whatever. Anyway, it's dope. It's definitely good enough. So let me give you an example of how I use my performance template. I'm going to put on my headphones. So I'm going to move from part to part. Mostly it's going to look like I'm just unmuting things, but really what's happening is I'm going to use the effects on my Octatrack to move from different positions in the song, utilizing flex tracks, which are listening to recording buffers, and utilizing insert effects, which I have assigned to scenes to make my own personal effects. <laughs> So right here, I have some music playing. I have a kick, a snare, a vocal sample that's going on one of every 64 steps, along with a bass line on my digital. So I have a low pass, it says LP slash AB, so it's low passing inputs A and B. So I can low pass my percussive side, take my kick out, do a snare roll. 
that's something I can do with the Octatrack and external gear. I can do that anytime I want. We can go slow. We could go for a while. Cool. So that's just one example. So that's why I love this, and that's why it's unique. I also have a version of it where it's high pass. Lo-fi effect. Tape stop. And then I have these recording buffer scenes, which are a little bit more interesting. Let me show you some more effects and just kind of how this works. So let's do the Daft Punk effect, and we'll use it to transition to a new part of the song. So now we've just moved to a new segment of our music. It's definitely more alive. I imagine this is where people are starting to actually, you know, vibe a little bit, starting to dance. So I have a low pass and a high pass on the whole mix. It's a master low pass and high pass. That's utilizing the master tracks filter. So I have a filter on effects one here, which is one of the insert effects. I can put any effect I want there. You can put any effect you want there. I'm using it as this master as a high pass, low pass because it's super effective. Here's that high pass. Give everybody a break for a second. Bring in another element. I think a lot of uh, like electronic music and live performance with electronic music is how you, uh, it's your composition and it's how you bring new elements of your composition in and out. Um, it takes a lot of practice to get really good at this. I think I'm constantly practicing, trying to get better, trying to be more fluid, trying to be faster, trying to think ahead further. That's a big part of it. Um, so let's, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the performance mixer. So you know that these scenes are now assigned to different things. They do different things for different machines, but they always work together and there's always an idea. These recording buffers here, in the tutorial that I made for building this template, which doesn't build the effects, it just builds out these loopers and it shows you how to make this template and you can start building your effects. And I'll put a link to that in the video description too. These loopers are assigned to different machines. This one records four bars of inputs A and B. This looper here, which is not really a looper, it's a flex track I have designed as a looper. We're gonna to continue to call them loopers because that makes sense. So this looper is recording the digitone. Right? And this last one is recording the master track. So it's recording everything. This one's the most useful. This is one that you can take this idea of recording the master track and apply that to all of your projects with the Octa track. And I would, and I always do. Because once you get fast and used to using a four bar looper with like dance music particularly, you can't not have one. They're so powerful from moving from part to part. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first, we're gonna record a loop on the Digitac then we're gonna record a loop on the master track. Or we could record a loop on the digitone and then record a loop on the master track. I'm gonna show you how this overdubbing style slash compounding of these recordings creates a whole new variation of your music and you can do it live and it gives you a moment to not only change your music to something more interesting that maybe you didn't even expect you were gonna do, but also capture some cool moments and give you a moment to unmute or move to another segment of your song. So here we go. I'm gonna hold track five and hit yes. And this is arming my recording track because I'm using one shot record tricks. But you could also just hit record three because I have it set up to do that as well. But if you do this method, the sequencer has to be running. Otherwise you'll just start your recorder now. So it's more effective, I think, to use track five and hit yes. Plus it's harder to screw up because you have to do two things and use two hands usually unless you have like, yeah. Well, you could do it that way. So I have this record buffer armed and we're gonna kind of just play with the Digitac as it's recording. And we'll play with these scenes too. So maybe we'll play with the slow pass filter. So now I have a recording of that. If I go to scene AB, we can hear that recording. I mean, that wasn't the most useful movement that I made right there. Maybe we should do it again. Do something more interesting. So it'll start again after this four bars have finished. Okay, so we have a new recording. 
It's definitely more interesting than the last one. It's just gonna keep looping. It's perfect, right? It seems like it's part of the music, like it was very intended. I just made it up, right? You would just make it up on the go. So now I can start a recording here, and then we'll mess with the digitone in the same way. It will play with uh, the algorithms. It's obvious that you're messing with it. All right, now we're going to all, which is a recording of everything. So it was listening to the recording of the Digitac, plus recording everything I was just doing. Now listen to what we have. Okay, while this is playing, I have access to changing everything. Let's unmute some stuff on the Digitone. Let's unmute the rest of these tracks on the Digitech. Yes. Now we're at the next part. Cool. So you get the idea, right? Now we have also our freeze delays that we can use, and this is pretty fun. So let's do it with the Digitone this time. And we'll kind of mess with the Digitone. Here's our Digitone version. Just turn down the Digitech for you so you can really hear what I did. sick, right? It's very cool. It's very fun. And it makes, like, that element of songwriting that you do on your devices here, on your sequencers, that part's super fun. And then playing it out, unmuting, and maybe playing with control all if it comes to an electron device, that's really fun. But you always feel like there's something missing. So you go into your DAW, and you automate some filter cutoff, some filter sweeps, you automate some delay and some reverb, and you do some stuff like that to kind of like bring some movement, add some snare rolls and stuff that you weren't able to do that sounded good during your performance because every time you hit your page button or the fill condition, it was just the same um, velocity. Well, I'm emulating the velocity going up using the low pass filter because it's taking up so much harmonic content, which is inevitably bringing the volume of those snare rolls down. So there's just a lot of tricks to getting this to feel like a complete Ableton project that you're performing live. However, people are watching you do this all by hand, and that is a fun experience, not just for you, but also for the person at the show, because they feel like they're a part of a performance rather than just dancing at the club. Right now, I'm gonna go through all the effects that I have on here and try to tell you what they are, and then I'll try and demonstrate using them. So this first effect is kind of like a bandpass filter that's running into a lo-fi and then going into a chorus. And then there's some dark reverb on the melodic side of things, so on uh, the C and D inputs. And it sounds like this. It's really wide, feels really big. So that's that first effect. The second one is just a freeze of the whole entire um, performance, and it just kind of echoes out. This is a spot where you could unmute or mute some things. You kind of want to time these. It's nice to have them land on like a snare roll or a snare hit. I think. The next one is the Daft Punk effect, which is a bandpass filter going into a looper. A looper using the delay. This one's really sick, so here we are bringing those elements back. A great one for that. All right, this next one is another freeze, but it only freezes this side, and I use it like this. This is kind of cool. It's a really 
great way to do a build up. I forgot, this actually is a freeze of both these machines, as you can hear. All right, all right, this next one is similar to the Daft Punk effect, but it has an LFO going to the frequency on one of the filters, and it makes this effect. And that is, of course, synced to the clock. It's a cool effect. It's uh, very busy sounding, so use it sparingly. And then the next one is the sidechain pumping effect. So this is using an LFO triggering on quarter notes across the master track, or I'm sorry, across the through track of the digitone. And uh, there's also some dark reverb that's going pre before the um, envelopes are cutting the frequency out. Okay, so this last, well, I already showed you these buffers, so we're not gonna talk about that, but we'll talk about this one fifth down. And this is a modulation of your entire performance. This requires you to have recorded something on to track seven. So hold that down, hit yes, let's just record. There it goes. All right, so here's that recording, but uh, now I can use the tape stop and then here I am at that modulation. It's gonna be perfect, check this out. It sounds great. This is actually very musical. This will work with any of the music that you used and it will sound musical. So, I mean, that covers most of it. Um, you have to do some clever stuff. There's lots of ways to use the template here. Um, like I said, if you want this template, visit patreon.com slash easybot and check it out for yourself and see if you like it. It's $3 to get into the Patreon and you can just download the template from my Discord. Yeah, I think this is enough to really get you started and give you an idea of why the Octatrack is still a very relevant piece of gear after 11 years. It continues to be my favorite device that I own. Like I said, visit patreon.com slash easybot if you want to get the template for my performance mixer. Tell me what you think about the performance mixer in the comments below. Like and subscribe to my channel. So I'm just going to play some music using the template and let everybody go. Thanks for watching.